Yo, guys. Hey, you here. On Common Sense, I just saw a funny comment uh, I got from someone on YouTube. Uh, there we go. Yo, guys. How are we today? I see seven likes. Doesn't seem to be all that many people uh, watching right now. But you've been uh, here to like before, at least. So that I appreciate. Uh, I've had a good week. Uh, after dealing with some anxiety last weekend, the difficult, you know, you saw the dancing, you saw the demon slaying. <laughs> uh, and now I was going to go out in the rain for a stream for, a, for the difficult, but um, it stopped raining. So now it's not so difficult anymore. The difficult would be that I'm wearing these crappy shoes that I, I hate and will throw away. Um, but I took them because it's wet uh, outside, so it doesn't matter, but they are a little bit small. I have a little bit of a sore on a toe, so it's not all that comfy right now. Uh, but yeah, guys, what's up? Um, <laughs> Don, where is music from? Chrono Trigger. No, that's from, <laughs> let's put it like this, 95% or at least 90% of the music I use is from the Donkey Kong Country games. So that is aquatic ambience from Donkey Kong Country 1, the, um, the underwater level music. Yeah, and last week I used Gangplank, Galleon, the pirate music from the same game. You know, da 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 and they kind of feel like they don't deserve it. But also, it's a lot of people who want to do something like what I'm doing, right? Go, go their own way, <clears throat> start their own business, put out their own brand uh, on social media and that. Well, what you gotta do is it still, you know? Like, th this is the thing I actually talked to a good friend of mine. Uh, I'm not gonna say who she is, but uh, someone who actually has a big following that I become friends with. Uh, on, on social media, in the fitness realm and that. It's funny because she has like, in pure numbers, she has like, I don't know, 30 times more uh, followers than I have. But uh, she doesn't make much money on it. She just has the following. And she feels, you know, she wants to do something like, like what I'm doing, move to another country. And uh, yeah, live the dream, you know, working or living where you uh, always wanted to live and working the job you always wanted. And the problem is that, you know, when you say what to do with imposter syndrome, it's a typical one of those things where people, I'm not saying that you are saying this, but, you know, people want to get rid of the imposter syndrome so they can do the thing that they want to do. But it's like, no, <laughs> that, not going to happen. This is, it's fear. You feel like you're not good enough. Um, and you have to prove to yourself that you are. You just got to do the thing uh, still. So, I mean... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know exactly for what you have the imposter syndrome now, but uh, you know, it's the same thing for me. You know, I felt before this, you know, even though I know, uh, you know, I know that I made good progress. I know that I can help people and that I feel like, do I really have what it takes, you know, to, to start my own business and run it that way and get clients like that and pay my bills just from my own business like that, you know, uh, and I just kind of had to just start doing it. Uh, and I felt when people actually wanted to hire me, right, I already feel less of an imposter when I start to put out content directly marketing coaching, right. And the more I do it, I work with a client uh, and I get mileage and I get results with some, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I get better as a coach, even more secure, I feel in my thing. Uh, that's uh, like right now, like when I was having my sales calls with all the clients at the start, or I mean, I guess at the end of last year, before starting uh, with them this year, you know, I, I was quite confident in my product, but I felt a little weird, still thought too much about the selling part. Like, oh, I, I don't like asking for money, you know. Um, but now I know it's so truly how much value I bring to people that I know that even asking for the money part is to help them. <laughs> because I know that people have, they are not accountable enough if they don't pay enough, right? So, 
yeah, the, that's the thing with imposter syndrome. It's kind of facing fear thing again. Uh, you you just kind of have to just do the thing still. Prove to yourself that you're not an imposter. If you feel like an imposter, prove to yourself that you're not, right? So that's it. Um, yeah. Okay, slow starter this stream, but I have some questions too uh, that I got from, yeah, well before the stream. Uh, the, the first one, someone asked me if there were any collabs or something like that planned in the future. And I, I'll get to it. I, I have some things, but I'll say that this is one thing, guys. You know, I'm working so fucking hard on this channel. You have no idea. Have you noticed the little check mark that has appeared be, uh, beside the name on the channel now? I'm verified, and look, I'm a small channel. You don't get verified uh, without the right contact and without paying money, you know? Uh, I'll just say that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm doing everything I can. And thanks for liking the stream, guys. Um, but and this with the collabs, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to book many collabs. Do you know how fucking hard it is to get the attention of some guys that have, you know, I don't know, just way more followers than me. Like it's very, they get dumb requests all the time. Uh, it's very hard to stick out and gain their attention in a positive manner, right? So uh, what, what I do have, I do have a podcast planned. Uh, it's just a question of when we can sync up our schedule. But he's, uh, he said yes. A guy that's called Reps, Reps Not Roids uh, on Instagram, like Reps dot not dot Roids. And amazing noble natty uh, solar night kind of guy jacked and tan chad you know and he just has like uh, um, on, on like the gains level i'd say that he and i probably have uh, like uh, similar physiques like you know different strong points and that but like similar level of progress but his diet is just the best fucking thing i've ever seen like i've never seen a cleaner more on point diet so we're gonna have a podcast eventually uh yeah uh, and so I, I want to focus a lot on his diet knowledge, but then just talk about life like I want to do with everyone. I always want to talk about the person and then the things they uh, are experts in, right? And then uh, in October, I will actually go to visit my my mentor, Opti Holm. Also, these both guys are just on Instagram, uh, Opti Holm, at Opti Holm uh, on Instagram. Uh, just imagine, kind of imagine me, just seven years older and probably uh, seven years ahead on the same kind of journey. Like he, he's one of the, he's like the only guy I really look up to. Do you understand? There are many I admire and that they have skills that I don't. But this is like the guy that, yeah, fuck, he's just doing the shit I want to do, but better at, at almost everything. I will actually go to visit him, most likely. It's again, it's not a cer certain date booked, but the, the plan is that I go visit him for one or two days and uh, just, uh, can I, should be able to remove notifications when you're on a stream, right? But uh, yeah, and so my plan is to make a little like vlog. We, we're gonna do all the intense shit, the searcher shit, you know, the, the difficult. It's gonna be a whole lot of difficult. Uh, so those are the only things that I officially have a plan that I'm working on. And this is what I'm saying, guys, you gotta help me with this. If you wanna see collabs, it's not enough that I come begging all these guys uh, many times. So please, please, can I have a podcast? Uh, I don't go out, uh, I don't come like that, like that desperate, you know, but um, it's so difficult, guys. I'm trying to get these collabs to happen. I've got it, I've, you guys have told me, but um, that, that you would like more of that, but you gotta help me too, is what I'm saying. Like on similar channels, you should comment like, oh, I'd love to see you talk with Theo from Uncommon Sense, do you understand? Um, yeah, you, you, you gotta help out with this if it's something you wanna see. Uh, so yeah, couple co collabs planned. I'm always working on it, and uh, yeah, yeah, guys. The, again, the verified check mark on this channel that I just got, not for free, uh, not for free, guys. Uh, t took work to get there, and uh, yeah, the, the funny thing is how it works with those verification check marks that you just get taken seriously because you have this little thing <laughs> next to your name. I, I don't really think more people would just click my videos because I have the verified check mark now. But a very good thing is that in comment section, of course, most people that comment on YouTube just um, are, are just users, right? But on Instagram, for instance, it's more likely that people will click commenters because more people post. But on YouTube, there's a lot of people that's just here to watch, right, and comment. Uh, so. 
it's not very likely that someone clicks your name in a comment section. But now when I have the verification check mark, when I comment, people will actually know this is a channel. This is not just uh, someone commenting, right? So I think that's the best thing with that, really. Uh, so I got one question uh, too, like why Greece? Well, because I'm moving. Okay, you want to move, but why Greece? Well, I knew two years ago that I want to move and uh, I probably uh, switch countries, but definitely just leave Stockholm because I, I happen to live in what I think is the, oh wow, I just wish I see the sun coming out now, but it's a little, can you see it in the background? Yeah, it's a little, I'd have to climb the tree to get it. Maybe I'll do that. Not too much going on on the stream. <laughs> um, no, but uh, yeah, I've known for um, about two years. Okay, I, I got to move, but where? And I've been thinking about this. And so this summer, uh, when I felt like I reached a new level, I created this whole, or I created, I became this solar night, you know, that whole thing became a thing. And um, then I just thought like, uh, okay, I, I obviously want to move some, somewhere where warmer, nicer. I'd like more open-minded people. I don't want to think too far away because I like Europe, you know. I like Europe. I wouldn't want to live in Thailand. Like Thailand, great for a vacation or, uh, sometime, you know. I've been there once, but I wouldn't want to live there. And so when I just kind of did, did that, you know, not deduction or whatever, but I came up with, okay, Spain or Greece. Those are the places that I'd like to be in. 3037, by the way, 1337. Um, and yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I have some connections to Greece. I might know some some people living there, and I just know more about the country. And yeah, I decided on Greece, but it's like it's still. I, I predict that it will go well, and I will be happy there. But it's still like a test. I've never lived somewhere else, right? So I gotta view it as a test. So because I want to be still kind of close to home, not too far away, uh, it has to be similar enough but different in the ways I'd like, mainly the weather and the people. Uh, yeah, Greece is what I uh, came up with. Uh, and so I'll actually answer a question that uh, a client asked me right before the stream, which was, I'll just see, sometimes the chat doesn't pop up. Uh, okay, no, in a very quiet stream today. Um, maybe, I, uh, is it mental health stream? You, you're just more, less prone to watch it then? I'm just going to untangle this. Uh, no, but my client asked me, what do you do when you feel discouraged, discouraged? And so it was kind of a general question. I'm sure he's going to follow up and him and I will talk about it. But um, I, I, I gave him a general answer that I just do the same thing. <laughs> I do, you just got to do the same thing still, you know, it, it, you, you got to believe in it, you know. Uh, it's like I've felt discouraged um, lately a bit sometimes with the growth of this YouTube channel. I feel like I grind so much. I try to ask so much, like, well, what videos do you like to see? You know, uh, I try to answer all the comments. I try to do everything, you know, and then I see the sub count going up so very, 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 very slowly. And I feel discouraged then. But, you know, what am I supposed to do, you know? Uh, I mean, I, I, I get to vent, vent it a bit on these streams and videos sometimes, uh, but, and you know, it's just a grind. It is a grind. What, what am I supposed to do? Uh, I just guess I'll just, I feel a bit discouraged. I guess I'll just give up on my dream. I guess I just don't reach my goals because I feel discouraged. No, that, that's how life is sometimes. Life is difficult. Not, it can't be all sunshine and rainbows and everything going your way all the time. It's because you can feel the difficult, it's because you can feel discouraged sometimes, that you sometimes can feel really good about things, right? Um, so it's kind of like motivation, you know, people ask me a lot of that, how, how do you do when you don't feel motivated or what do you do to get the motivation back? It's kind of like the same things that I do as when I am motivated, I just do until I'm motivated again. It's like the grind, I had a depression sort of, like a borderline depression, I guess I uh, describe it, like at the start of this year. And I did not feel motivated in fucking everything, uh, anything, uh, not even my training, it's, though, it's that time when I kind of don't feel like training even. Uh, I, I get excited every once in a while during a workout, but lots of the time it's just like, uh, and, uh, uh, but I have this deep value, this higher value behind what I feel that I, uh, I want to become the strongest and best version of myself. And I also know if I'm feeling this crappy now, uh, I'll feel even, even crappier if I stop doing this, you know? And then I just sort of do this, have my process to come out 
of the depression uh, and all of a sudden the motivation is back and I'm so fucking happy because I made progress uh, even when I didn't feel motivated at all and now it's super easy to keep the progress going because now I'm motivated again, right? So that's when you feel discouraged, um, generally, you just kind of got to keep grinding. It's a grind. It's like, uh, what are you supposed to do otherwise, you know? <laughs> Take drugs so you don't feel discouraged. Nah, that's a joke. That's a joke, kids. Okay, a few people here. I saw someone just liked the stream. Can you please uh, ask some questions? Because I don't really have much more now. It's a very quiet stream. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I guess since it is, uh, I, I call this one mental health stream. You know, I had, um, th yeah, the things I'm talking about, like I grind so much lately, guys. And because of the way I take care of myself uh, with my habits, you know, everything relating to health with, a, you know, everything, right? The training, the sleep, the diet, uh, the sunlight, but the relationships, uh, all the, the shit, you know. Because of this, I feel great most of the time, but I still, I grind so much right now. I really, because it's one thing to maintain the things. If you maintain a high level, it still work, but it's kind of easy. But, you know, I'm trying to grow <laughs> both my training, but this channel too. And so it accumulates. And when you feel like you get very little return on investment in a moment, it's difficult. And then I also just had some, uh, you know, tough relationship uh, stuff, you know, and I got anxious this weekend. And you know how I dealt with it, uh, you know, discouraged would be the feel, uh, wrong word to say that I felt. But how I dealt with it is just that I built this process now. Uh, I dealt with it by doing all the shit that I normally do, I just try to, if I can give myself a break somehow, like uh, if I notice that a client uh, might, they say, can we have our call a little later on that day? Maybe I take the chance of, you know what, can we actually reschedule it to another day? Because, you know, I I'm not really feeling good. I can always do what I need to do, but if I can give myself a break, I do. And then of course, anxiety in my case and uh, excitement it's the same in the nervous system it's very interesting how that works that it's just the thoughts you have um you know if you, if you deem what you're feeling <laughs> you, you know that it's associated with something that's bothering you something negative or something that you're happy about something that excites you so i with anxiety went out and danced to the donkey kong music you know and it's another level too because i faced the fear of judgment being a weirdo thing there uh, you know a lots of people it's funny that you can't see that in the video but lots of people are passing by and looking at me and laughing during that video but okay uh, Francisco Leon thank you for bringing a question follow this guy's example everyone and I re recognize you of course from before but bro any advice for resentment with my parents I don't know man I try to forget the past or just talk but I get like angry or just don't want to talk to them uh, it's like I don't connect too much well, okay, I guess this is something I can go on a long rant from. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> resentment with the parents, like, trust me, I get annoyed with my parents too, because the, the people that are close, the closer people are to you, the more fucking stubborn they are about everything, you know, like that they refuse to see you in any other way than they saw you when you were like a teenager or something. And... Um, yeah, they, they are just so fucking stuck in their ways. You know, to, to me, I, I, you know, I talk, I take examples from myself, you know, but don't you think it's kind of draining for me sometimes that I get so much credit from people in my life and I'm very grateful to be a person that, that's been able to influence and help so many people already with the things I do, even with such a small following in numbers uh, on social media and that, like in real life too, you know, just people I know and interact with. Uh, but... I, that I get so much credit for, you know, say like family friends that are very close uh, and it's like my own parents are just blind to it and in a sense it's not, it, I've come to the point where it's not so much like please validate me parents, please validate me, you know, it, it's more like uh, can, can, you, uh, can, can you stop acting like I'm some fucking, I'm here, I'm right here, you know, I'm Theo, I, I'm a fucking alpha, I, I'm, stop talking to me as if I'm the little kid, it's just, it's like kind of my, my uncle too, he loves me, uh, and he can give me great advice, but he's like, he's completely ignoring this part of me with the, the uncommon sense, like he chooses what to see in me, uh, and it kind of gets just like, Again, I'm not sad that, oh, uncle, please tell me I'm good at the training stuff. It's just kind of draining to feel like someone isn't really seeing you for who you are. It's uh, like you get treated like someone else, you know. 
So what I want to come to with this is that I think you'll always feel some kind of irritation or resentment as long as you're, you know, because they are fucking annoying. You know, a lot of the time when you get annoyed or angry or frustrated, you should always stop and ask like, okay, what does this, that this, this thing annoys me with that person? What does that say about me? Because a lot of the time we project stuff that bothers us in others is really because it's in us. But sometimes it's just like, no. This person is just fucking annoying. It's like a fly flying in your face. Like, zzz, zzz. am I, um, do, is it like an emotional trigger? Do I project on the fly when I'm like, fucking fly away with you, you know? Um, so, so my point with this uh, rant is just that uh, it's okay that you have some feelings like that. But it, it would, if you feel like angry and hateful really towards your parents, that wouldn't be good, of course. But you know, bro, all you can do is forgive them in your heart, try to understand them as much as possible where they come from, even have talks like that, you know, I, I've talked with my parents about their childhood, I think I understand uh, how they've been affected uh, by some things a lot more than they have, like to me it's amazing when I asked my dad once, like, what do you think your parents did right, like what did they give you that was good and what did they do wrong, it was like, I, I've, uh, no one ever asked me about that, so I never really thought about it, I'm like, this is incredible to me, you know, but still when they've told me certain things and I can see where they're coming from that the way they've treated me that I don't like, they got treated the exact same way and they just do everything that they were taught, you know, but I, I think I said this on the last stream or in some other video, I don't remember, now it's raining and now it's the rain stream for the difficult, um, but I kind of come full circle that, you know, I've said that you, you forgive your parents, but you, um, you can still acknowledge the things that they did wrong, you know, but in a sense, <laughs> I now realize that, but, but all the, the, the fears they've projected onto me, the things that they want me to learn, you know, or watch out for, I've learned it. And I, you know, inevitably that my upbringing was a big part of getting me to where I am today, you know? So when you can kind of see it like that, like, yeah, okay, the theoretically, if we go back, there are a lot of things they could have done better, but now I am here and I'm fucking happy and I have to acknowledge that <laughs> my parents did a good job in that way, like, because, yeah, I, I, I have had to learn some tough lessons because of what I went through, right? So when you can end up in kind of that, it, it's kind of very Buddhist, you know? Uh, there's no positive and negative in that sense, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it was tough for you emotionally, the things, but um, yeah, okay, you, you go on here, mm, exactly, it's like sometimes I have to talk to them, like any topic, mostly because my girlfriend says, hey, talk, hug your parents, be more lovely with them, and it's like, I don't feel like doing that, yeah, that, that's the thing, man, especially the hugging or be caring to them, hmm, uh, and why uh, and why don't you feel that way? Because be, be caring is what I do care about my parents. Like I'm trying to fucking get to help them now. Uh, I'm trying to make them understand that, look, the son is now the parent. Uh, <laughs> and what I mean by that, by the way, I can still definitely get help with things. Like my company, for instance, my dad helps me with stuff that I'm just, my ADHD brain is not very good at doing, like just um, admin shit, you know. Uh, and he helps me with that and I train him, you know, uh, and I, so I like that, but yeah, I want to, I, I've leveled up so much now, like all the things they are afraid of, I'm not afraid of anymore because I've mastered those things, right? Um, so yeah, um, I, I gotta ask, what, what, what is it that they are doing, you know, that, uh, you know, I should have a call-in show when I have more viewers, I would love to take calls with people like this. Um, and I don't mean people like this, like you, friends, if people like this, having conversations like this, but on a call. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, if you don't feel like, you say, and I understand my girlfriend because I guess she's right, but I just feel very awkward hugging them or telling them that I care for them. Um, yeah, but it seems like kind of a shutdown. It's, it seems like a kind of a protective mechanism. Uh, it, it, seems, it sounds in a way like you feel abandoned by them, you know, and you feel like, why should I be the one? to hug them, why should I be the one to express this? And look, man, this, do you know how much I have to be the mature one with my parents, you know? Like, uh, my dad, he, uh, he barely ever says he loves me, you know? I don't, I mean, I can count on one hand probably the times he's done that since my teens, you know? Uh, and uh, 
you know, I, I gave him such an opening uh, once when I was like, when, when he, because what the parents always do, they always want to tell you what can go wrong. You know, when I'm coming all excited with something, it's like, yeah, but you look out for this, look out for this. It's like, okay, can, can you at least say, great, that, that's great. I'm happy for you, son. I'm proud of you. I love you or whatever, you know, and they always, but oh, I, I'm just, uh, I, I'm just being realistic. Blah, blah, blah. It's not realistic to always be negative and never give positive feedback. The, it, 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 the world is not all negative and risk uh, and, you know, uh, but yeah, it, it was so in the conversation, I said that basically that, yeah, you, you could have just said, yeah, I, I love you, son. I'm proud of you or something. Not even with that. Uh, what, what do you call it in English? The layup, you know, he doesn't take it. And I have to point out to him that you didn't even take that obvious layup, you know, uh, and it's the same thing when they've been immature and started some kind of fight argument with me and maybe I actually got a bit triggered and got a bit angry. So, because that's my thing, I try to be mature until I'm like, now I fucking had it, now I'm going to tell you exactly what a fucking idiot you are, I'm going to slay you with my words because I'm just so much better with my words than you, you little fucking idiot. Um, and I go like that and then when I go away and I calm myself down, I'm like, ah. Oh, I don't like that. It's their fucking fault. I did not start that argument. I came in all positive. They had to do this fucking shit again. And then I have to go and say, you know, I apologize that I took your stupid ass bait. You know, you started this very immature argument, uh, but I should not have taken the bait. Even though you're being a complete idiot, I should not, um, we should not fight and I should not allow myself to get that angry. And I'm setting an example for you now because you literally never uh, apologized for anything ever uh, to me in, in your entire life. Um, uh, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's a grind. It's a grind with the parents, especially. I just know, you know, they, they come around gradually. You know, I, I see progress with my parents, you know, in certain things. Uh, it's just that w uh, it goes so very slow that many times when you've been like optimistic, like, oh, look, see, they, they seem to get this now. And then you get like, Pfft. Okay, no, apparently they did not, you know. Um, so, yeah. And so, Francisco again. And please, other guys, please talk. I see you drop by and like. Can you please ask more questions too? That would be helpful. We have another half hour I have to try to talk here. Okay, that definitely is like a protective thing that I use on myself. It's like I used to be a great student, like almost the best. But when they didn't care or they weren't very supportive, I just didn't care. Also, like lots of bad grades and failing in life in general uh yeah 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 uh, and, but that that was the thing with my parents too you know that uh and other people around me have pointed out that uh, i was a very capable kid like i think it's kind of obvious now with the things i've done you know um but i my parents sort of only told me what i did wrong and um I felt like, but I'm doing a lot of things good. Like, why do you never say anything about that, you know? But as a kid, you, are, you know, you don't know that you're right in that, that you're in a way like, you're, you're right. Like, why are you such a fucking piece of shit and only tell me what I'm doing wrong? Like, if you have some crit uh, criticism uh, or feedback, you, like, why don't you take that after acknowledging the, all the great stuff I'm doing, you know? And then, yeah, you sort of, just, like you did there, it's kind of like, okay, fuck it then. Uh, the, uh, I, I'm not getting any love for this it doesn't see and it's not rewarding at all to do this boring studying shit you know and uh, yeah it's like it was something else i was thinking about yeah yeah a, a similar one uh, it, it's uh, my, my mom you know i had a value when things started being more difficult at home you know but uh, I, I had a value still that i won't be drinking you know ever i don't know but not as a kid you know when because in the teens when people started doing that like, well, i won't do that because i heard that my dad didn't start doing that until he was like 20 and i felt like i, I want to because i had a value from when i really looked up to my dad as a kid you know so like yeah i'm gonna do it like my dad and i remember when i just wanted to go out and be with people i literally i have not i don't drink when others drink in that you know and my mom accused me of wanting to go out and get drunk i remember how furious I got, how fucking unfair is that? I'm the good guy, I'm the one that follows the rules, you know, and I still get shit for it, you know. What do you think happened by that? She drove me right into like, okay, fuck it, I get shit for drinking, might as well, you know. It's kind of, it's the opposite in a sense, what you told her, Francisco, like, um, you know, okay, I, I do the good thing, but no one fucking tells me anything ever about it. Okay, what's the point, you know? What's the fucking point? 
it's funny, the, the parents, they often, by being so very afraid, and I'm going to get to the next question, I saw there was a, another one, but being so very afraid that you will make the same mistake as they did, they, they drive you right into that, you know. And then some of us, like me, for instance, manages to learn from their mistakes still, you know. Um, okay, chat. Hello, chat. Okay, someone with a very difficult... Yeah, please, I see more people now, it's nice. Please like, please keep more questions coming. Another half an hour here. Please support me with a super chat too. That would be nice. Encourage me. Uh, observer, with a weird spelling. <laughs> How to deal with existential dread. Um, yeah, man. The, I mean, it's too general of a question. I guess you're... If I have to guess, you're sitting at home not doing anything meaningful at all, you know. And then you wonder why you have existential dread. Like, may, give, you, give yourself some existential joy, you know. Like, like do something of meaning in your life. That, like, that's, that, that's what I realized, you know, when I had existential dread all the time. It's because, of course, like, how could I not? I didn't do shit in my life other than, like, sensory pleasure, you know. Smoke weed, drink, jerk off, have sex, watch TV series all the time, play video games all the time, get drunk all the time, party all the time, you know, and then you have some musts, like, oh, I gotta go to my university, or I gotta go to work. But, you know, what's the point? It's like your life is uh, working so that you get money to just experience sensory pleasures via the things I talked about there. It's like, uh, yeah, I now... I love my existence. It's so meaningful. I get to do things that I love doing. I get to level up myself. Uh, like I've reached such a high level. I'm not done, you know, and I get to have such an amazing impact. I can control. I, I'm not just a little observer of the world like I used to be, sitting there with my fucking existential dread and terrible anxiety and health uh, and just being like, oh, uh, it's so terrible, everything. It's like, you. Uh, what do you think when you live like that, you know? And, you know, I, I'm, I'm just ranting to a potential person. I, of course, know nothing of your specific situation, observer. But so many people uh, that have this existential dread, it, it makes total sense because you're not doing anything of meaning. Your, your existence is dreadful, <laughs> you know, just stating the facts here, you know. So you got to create that meaning. Uh, and the thing is, when you have that, you know, like I had when all my panic attacks started, you know, in a way... I felt better when the uh, during the panic attack phase than right before because in a sense even like right during a panic attack that was a terrible feeling but when I got that relief afterwards or at the times when I managed to go somewhere even though I had panic and overcome it you know that felt so fucking meaningful it's like I had to conquer death you know now I actually, instead of just sitting and being like, oh, I don't even know what to do, what's the point of it all? Well, the point is, I gotta fucking do this or I die, you know. Um, so, in a sense, that was, I, I felt better, uh, you know. You, you see the point, right? Of course I don't feel good when I'm having a panic attack, but throughout that whole phase. Because I finally had meaning, I was fighting something, and then I overcame it, and I just realized this, that, ah, oh, the difficult, you know, we're supposed, <laughs> it's the difficult that makes it uh, easy uh, afterwards, and if we just take the easy, the dopamine, the free dopamine, you know, the porn, the alcohol, the staying up late, uh, scrolling on the phone, being on the phone just all the time, video games, you know, binge-watching series, all this bullshit, you know. Of course you're dreading your existence if that's uh, your uh, life, because it's a dreadful, it sounds terrible, <laughs> you know. So, and I know we all, I've been there too, right? Uh, it's just that you got to change it. You, you, your existence has to be me feel meaningful to you, because you make it meaningful. It's not just all of a sudden be like, you know what? I, all, all of a sudden, uh, okay, you have this guy. Uh, I have abstained away from any narcotics, stopped smoking and jerking off a long time ago. Good man. I'm trying to pursue a meaningful career, but I'm always having thoughts about existence. Um, it sounds like you have a bit, little bit too much time or something still. You say you're pursuing a meaningful career, but um, like what thoughts about existence? Um, what thoughts is it that you're having? Um, and I see Francisco, you, you can, you, please, please uh, elaborate, you know. Uh, Francisco said, exactly, I realized about that very late, because my brother always did whatever he wants and got like small complaints from them, but I obeyed everything they said, and it cost me a breakup with a girlfriend. Like I always had to come very early to my place. Yeah, <laughs> it, it sounds very similar to uh, my parents, uh, you know. It was the same. Um, 
Yeah, but I guess I don't have any more input on that, uh, really. But um, small complaints. Hmm. I'm just thinking. Yeah. But okay, observer. I have so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The thing is, you know, thoughts about existence, like. You know, if, because I'm trying to think, because I've had the existential dread a lot, like what are we even doing here? Uh, what's the point of it? Wh how we got here? Who created us? Well, I have good news. It was God that created us. And how? Uh, I, you, you know, you're never going to know that anyway, you know, so try, <laughs> let go, press the let go button. Uh, it, it's a joke, actually, that I've done with a friend that, you know, what I call bad self-help advice, when, when it's just simplified, like, you just got to let it go, just let it go. And it's like, okay, and so how do I do that, you know? And Francisco said, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, thank you. If you have any other questions about any other thing, it, you know, now we call it a mental health stream, but you can always ask about anything, of course. But how we got here, who created us? Like, my question back would be, why does that matter? Like, we're here now. How does one let go? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, man, it's like... You you gotta create. You you find that meaning. You create it on your own. Like look at me. I don't care uh, why you know or how come we're here. Whatever. I know why we're here to spread God's love, to uplift each other, to mutually um, you know uh, um, mutually. What is the word? Our, our collective consciousness. Raise it. You know that that's we're just supposed to become better together. We are supposed to win the game together, the game of life, you know. And then, uh, you know, I know that, that's just it. We're here, you know. Uh, it's like at a point you just gotta <laughs> let go. But, but I don't mean like you can just press the let go button again. It's a joke. I even do. But you know, it's still like that's what you kind of gotta work towards. Find your own meaning, and uh, all of a sudden you're not gonna care so much. I remember what I was sitting and doing right before going into the whole panic attack phase. I was reading this kind of alt-right biologist's book that's called The Revolutionary Phenotype, where he basically predicted that uh, another life form will take over and use humans as slaves in like 500 years or so. Uh, and not even the AI, a much more complicated idea. Uh, but, but yeah, that, that felt so... Uh, yeah, I was sitting and thinking about all these things, and now I'm like, oh, I can't do anything about that anyway, you know. I, I've just stopped worrying so much about things that are out of my control. And I focus, because I, I focus on what I can control. I know how many things I actually can control, you know. I, I've made myself into an entirely different person. Like the core is there, of course. I have similar humor and all that, you know. But the, all the fears I used to have, it's like I can't barely grasp what it feels like anymore, you know. The things I felt were impossible to achieve, I just have achieved now, you know. Uh, and so when you do that, it's kind of when you notice how much control and just how much you can enjoy life, you don't really care how, how did it happen. It's like, uh, it did. We're here now, you know. And say, so, the thoughts became a real pain in the ass after I had a major panic attack from a microdose. Yeah, you see, it's the, that's what I've said about, about the psychedelics. Uh, if you do it right, or if you're just lucky or unlucky kind of too, I would say probably. Uh, but um, yeah, they, they can speed up uh, spiritual growth. Uh, you, you can have like uh, something that you through just working on yourself would realize in a long time, it, because it's kind of like your brain is just so much more active, right? You could reach that insight uh, faster, but you could also reach a psychosis uh, or something like that faster, right? So, okay, the thoughts about that. But then, do you know what? What I would do, uh, do, do you meditate or pray? Because well, that's what I've come to do with the thoughts, you know? Like when, because I get intrusive, difficult thoughts too. It's just not so much about the existential things anymore. Um, I'll admit that it's the romance a lot. If, if I get triggered by the girl I like, you know, that's the most difficult thing to me. Uh, I get some very, very disturbing thoughts that, oh, you, you, you are an Orthodox Christian. Yeah, well, good. But, you know, that's what I do with the things. Uh, I, 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 I pray and I, I like kind of watch them and I try to you know, look look at them from the outside as much as possible. Uh, and suddenly they can uh, seem kind of silly sometimes. Like, wh what, why is this even here? Who, who put that here, you know? Like, like why am I thinking this? What, what's, what, what's the point of this, really, you know? 
And yeah, but it's it's a gradual process, of course. It's not something you're gonna do uh, suddenly. But yeah, it, it it's it's a hard thing. I mean, there's some kids here. What are you doing? I think they know. You know, kids tend to when they see that I'm talking to the camera, they tend to always do something that makes noises. I don't know if you heard them, but I I got a little distracted from it. Uh, have you had trouble with DPDR when you had panic attacks? What what is that? And like, if you explain what DPDR is, I'll, I'll answer another question here. Francisco Leon. Yes, the answer is probably obvious, but I'm still going to ask. Am I weird for not liking to go out to parties, dance, drink alcohol, and like hugging everybody or making jokes with them? No, uh, that, that's normal, I'd say. Um, it, you know, I think it's weird to want to do all that stuff. I, I mean, I don't think it's weird, really. Like, it just shows a lack of any meaningful things to do if you do that all the time, you know. Um, no, no. Uh, I mean, those are fucking shit things that really... You know, I used to do those things, you know, but it was really to fill some kind of void, chasing something. I'm not feeling good. Now it's the weekend. Now I gotta, gotta make it happen, you know. Gotta, oh, we're, we're drinking. Oh, we're feeling good. Uh, I gotta find a girl and fuck her because that, for some reason, is important. Um, and yeah, that, that I just never really felt good from it afterwards. I mean, I'll say that well, some partying have been a little bit of fun. You can't lie about that, but at the point it's like just you're stuck in that grind of you're a weakened warrior basically and also no i don't think that's weird at all and i also don't like kind of that everyone always has to hug so much like some people i want to hug sometimes you know but you know with the, this thing when you meet up with people and you gotta like hey hey can't i if i'm coming to can i just be like hey guys what's up you know um, <laughs> so i don't think you're weird at all mm. okay um Observer, I'm new to this channel, sorry. No, no, that, that's fine. Uh, I don't know actually what you're apologizing over, but I, I just ask, ask what a DPDR is. Depersonalization, derealization. Um, what, what I had, especially after the first panic attack, was uh, uh, disassociation. Or like, I, I guess these things are kind of all the same thing, but what I, I felt like my body and mind were disconnected. I remember standing and looking at my hands and it does not feel like my hand, you know. Uh, at th this was during the first panic attack, but the first panic attack was so shocking that it kind of left a mark. This is a term that combines those two. Okay, yeah. Well, then I experienced that. Uh, um, yeah, uh, the first one, I, I had new panic attacks during that like period after, but it was like 10 weeks of feeling like I was looking, you know, when I was sitting on the subway, I could like just feel like I was looking at myself from the outside. I was like, ah. I, I tried to not feed those thoughts, you know, because uh, I'd start a new full-blown panic attack. And many, it happened when I was sitting at work on my desk and I was, you know, I know that I'm going to reach to grab something. So I react to my, my own hand as if it was someone else's hand and like, I'm gonna reach like, like that, you know. So I definitely had that. It's terrible, terrible feeling, uh, really. Yeah, Francisco Leon is like me and my sister, almost never talk and not deep talk. You know, guys, there's more and more likes, but so few people that interact in the chat. It's kind of a disgrace. You know, I, I am gonna trigger you with this a lot. Uh, I'm so tired of all the people you know, not even for me and the channel like that. Like, mm, that people, there are so many people that your life, your entire life is watching other people live their lives. Because just sitting and looking, you're like a little bit of that, of course, but uh, I, I'm just so tired of it. Like when you ask questions on Instagram, you see how many people are looking, but not answering. It's like, it's that how you live your life. As if the kind of life around you is like a TV show and you're just sitting there like, uh, you don't take an active part, uh, li like it's a video game, your video game, you know, the most important one ever. Just saying, guys, I'm going to always, if, if you feel triggered when I say stuff like that, that that's a, like 100% sign that I'm right and that you should change. Okay, um, wait a minute. Uh, Francisco Leon, it's like me and my sister almost never talk and no deep talk at all, like never. And at my brother's birthday, she hugged me and him and said, I love you guys so much. Felt really weird. I mean, you're a little weird when you're talking about it because you gotta like, why is it weird? You don't feel close to your sister. You, you, you feel like she's shallow or whatever, you know, because you don't have to. That's the thing with your family. If you're like the black sheep of the family, you're different. If, if it drains you or you don't like being around them and that's the thing, then um, 
you know, you don't have to. It's like I've had to kind of bargain with my family a bit too, because I felt many times too, like, okay, I show up here. You guys talk about a lot of things that I don't care about. You want to drink and eat at times when I don't want to eat and you want to be up much later. I I've had to bargain and... Uh, make it so because i'm the only one that has to sacrifice anything everyone is just happy with how it is right so I, i've had to kind of bargain and show them like it, okay uh, if you make it too late i don't even come or i leave before you serve the dinner because you're making it too late you know uh, and so i've had a you know it, it's what you got to do in relationships you got to set your boundaries and see if people accept them but if they don't they don't you know so you don't even have to be around your sister if you don't you know enjoy it uh, like, you know, if you're not actually, like, unfriendly, you should stay in touch somehow, you know. You shouldn't disconnect completely, but it's not, it's fine. If you don't get along great with your sister like that, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I'm from Sweden and I'm 29, will be 30 uh, at the end of this year, Observer. So that was a quick one. Nice, so all of you guys came in now uh, when I've been uh, doing the one-man show almost. Like Francisco and Observer has been the saviors here. But I guess we might, if you keep it going, guys, especially if you send the super chats, encourage me, we might take it longer than an hour. Uh, but as of right now, we have 12 minutes left of the stream. So Observer also asked how I did get out of my thing. Well, th the thing I did, uh, man, was that I had to face all the, I finally faced the difficult, you know. I went knowing fully well that I was gonna get panic attacks. I went to these situations. And so I just le learned to master those situations a lot better. And I guess I started doing like little, like I noticed, you know, I couldn't really let go of my bad habits yet, like drinking and stuff. But sometimes I knew that I don't want to be drinking today because that, then I just ensure I'll have a panic attack tomorrow when I go do this thing, you know. But when I had faced the panic, uh, panic attack situations enough so that I didn't get panic anymore, and just felt kind of worn out and stressed out still, that's when I started working on my health, like I do on this channel. Uh, you know, the, 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 the training, fasting, improving my diet, improving my sleep, improving everything, you know. And then very quickly, when going on this path, I just felt so much better. And then I basically just felt better and better and better and better throughout the whole journey. So, yeah, for step one was don't run away from the panic attacks, face them. Uh, and then when I could master the panic attacks, so I was still, you know, highly sympathetic uh, state, uh, you know, sympathetic nervous system, stressed state, but I it just never manifested into a full blown panic attack. That's when I started working on my physical health. And of course, going through something like that, you start working on your mental health too. You, ha you have to introspect so much, look within figure out what the fuck is going on. Uh, yeah, Francisco Leon, uh, Austin Tipman, set my boundaries, like respect myself. Yeah, man, because you sound a little weird, like, oh, it's just weird, uh, it's strange. Uh, it's like, you know, you know, when you talk about it, and it's kind of like, um, yeah, but okay, if it's weird, why are you even there? Or <laughs> It's like, you bring it up as if it's something wrong with you or something, and it isn't, it isn't. Um, let's see. Randy just said, living vicariously. Yeah. Don, do you also feel bad when your sleep schedule is fucked up? Well, it, how do you mean? Feel just that I feel bad from it? Because if my sleep is bad, of course I feel worse. You know, that, that's how it works. <laughs> it's our only recovery mode. But if you mean that I just, you know, feel bad about it, like, oh, I fucked up my sleep schedule. Because I never do that. Uh, so it's not something I'm going to have to experience. Like uh, on, on Gotland, uh, I definitely slept too little um, and I felt a little bad about it because I know I was in such a high state. I'm, I'm like in a positive stress state, you know, my sympathetic nervous system is just like, <laughs> you know, it's the flip side to the thing that I can get anxiety. I can also go into an overdrive where I just kind of feel too good and I know it's fake in a sense because I, I know like, but I've been sleeping like five hours too many nights in a row now. Like this, this is not, <laughs> this is not going to last, you know. So, you know, I don't slide. I don't fuck up my sleep schedule so bad that I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, see, someone sent a super chat. Uh, let's see. Don, one million push-ups. <laughs> one million push-ups for two euros. Uh, gonna, if, you send, if you send me one million euros, you, you can get one euro. It'll do, do two push-ups for you here. See? There you go. Um... But thank you, I appreciate the super chat. Um, 
Patricia, I don't have any questions, but I just want to say thank you. Uh, yeah, last year I lost my uncle and my grandma one week apart and I was broken in every possible way. Then I found your channel and kind of started a new journey with you and the community you created. Well, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for telling me that. And I'm uh, honored and so happy. You have no idea how happy it makes me if I've been able to help you through those dark times. Um, because I've been through a lot of dark times myself, right? And there's been people, I've had people like you've had me, right? And it, it's so beautiful. It's again, always the reminder for me personally too, that I dreamt of doing things like this. And, you know, I've enjoyed people helping me with the other content. So I get so happy when, when others tell me that. So thank you so much for telling me, Patricia. And if you have any questions or anything in the future, um, yeah, you know, but please, what I want to encourage you guys that come out of your shell a little bit is please, please keep interacting with me, guys. That, that's what I want. That's what I go on my rants and talk about. Do you just want to be a little watcher or do you just want to be a consumer or do you want to be a producer? Because you are a producer when you talk in a chat with me. You contribute. You're actually producing the show with me, right? So thank you so much for telling me, Patricia, and please stick around uh, more times in the future. And Randy, no last name, he just sends that 10 bucks without even saying anything. That's, that's kind of Chad. Thanks, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I always feel bad when someone, because I, I'm, you know, I'm not a huge channel to just get spammed with these. Uh, and uh, when someone sends a super chat, I want to uplift it. But when it's uh, not even a message, it's kind of like, yeah, thanks, bro. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, so then we have Francisco Leon. Like my reason for being there is that I have to change, be more social, adapt to the normal people. But fuck the so-called normal people. Have you seen how boring and useless uh, so many people are? Uh, why should you shrink yourself to, to be, go down to their level because you should or something? It's like, you know, I, I know what, what you mean in a sense. Like, I, I, that's what I've done with my family meetups, right? I, I, when I say family, I mean like it, it's we have this word. It's a word that's kind of lacking in English. It's a select, which just means family, but not just your immediate family, but you know, the, the ones around you. Um, and I felt a bit like like okay, I, I, I'll go there, you know. Uh, but then when things just are. You know, if I don't want it, if I don't like it, why do I need to be there? I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, but you should be social and be with us. Okay, so I should be here as your little prop, as your little drug. You feel good when I'm here, but I don't. But, but I should be here for your sake. Go fuck yourself, you know. Like, I already, this is my uh, life in a nutshell. And so guys like us, Francesco, we want to look out. We're like, okay, what can I do? Uh, how can I change? What can I do to make the situation better? And it's like, yeah, you should. You should accommodate me at all times. And I don't have to do shit for you when you're bad. When you don't uh, act as you're my uh, personal, you know, source for joy and pleasure or whatever, you know, uh, that you're bad now. What? You don't want to just do shit for me for free all the time, even though I don't do anything for you? Oh, you're selfish. You're selfish. Like, all these fucking people can go fuck themselves, you know. And I, I'm, I'm ranting in it. Like, I, I know I'm exaggerating when I'm on street. I don't tell my family to go fuck themselves with that kind of attitude. Like, okay, if you're not going to accept my boundaries and treat it as if I'm the bad guy, when you want me to do what you want, uh, you know, and I am not trying to push anything on you. In fact, I'm here trying to be with you, you know. Ah, I just had it with it. And I, I guess I get, I get like um, flustered talking about it because I dealt with it so good in my life, but it, it's, so it, it makes me always more angry when, when I uh, think of other people in that situation because I know how terrible it is. I've been that guy my entire life that tries to be so fucking nice and there for people all the time and people, so many people just use it. And now it's like, I fucking had it. I'm gonna help, I'm gonna do my thing, but for my people, the other people, go away, go be somewhere else. Okay, Don said amazing. I guess that was about the sleep schedule stuff. Uh, observer. Don, right, your, your name is Martin, right? I think I know, I think you were a guy with the, that we did the Discord channel to begin with, right? That we don't use all that much. Okay, Observer asks, this might be the last questions, if, if, a question, if you don't keep it going, guys, with, with some more, um, yeah, other questions, uh, even the super chat, of course. I will always <laughs> remind you uh, that I appreciate the support. Have you seen, guys, I'll remind you before I go, have you seen that I got the verified check mark on this channel? Let me tell you, uh, if I put all the super chats together that I've gotten, um, 
it's nowhere near what I had to pay uh, to get that check mark, just so you know. It's what I do because the, the channel is grows so slowly. I try to make things happen now, you know. So, and the verified check mark, of course, people just respect it and you get more credibility. Um, and Francesco said that, yeah, thanks, man, I completely agree with you. Yeah, um, you're welcome, man. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know, I, uh, I get, it's funny, I've noticed it in my life, I'm gonna get to your psychotherapy question, but um, I, I've noticed in my life, uh, lots of things that I've gone through that really don't trigger me when I, it's just about me anymore. But when I see it in other people, I'd be like, you know, I, I get so, ah, that it, 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 the, the fucking people that they can just, do this, that, that they can be that way. Uh, be so fucking selfish and, and call you selfish when they just want you to dance to their pipe, you know. It, uh, uh. And Don sent eight euros and one cent. Well, I appreciate that. Um, you want more, eight more push-ups? Or uh, it's, not, it's not a great spot to do push-ups and you can't even see it well, but I'll do eight push-ups for you. Uh. <laughs> well, my goal here with Don is that one day, that the first million uh, he requested, uh, he will get in the end. Uh, yeah. I also abandoned Discord and watching YouTube video. Better doing something than consume videos. No, it's fine. No, so <laughs> no but yeah, yeah. No, I agree. That's the funny thing. It's, it's the kind of paradox that, of course, I want people to watch my videos and all that. Uh, but I don't want them to only do that. I want the, you to use my, the stuff I tell you or show you. I want you to implement for yourself and I want you to watch enough of my uh, content. And I also, when you watch, when you can, I want you to interact. And it's not only for my sake and uh, spreading the channel. It's like, it's again, because I know myself, it, it, I've also been a little scare, scared person that just sits and watch. So I sit and watch. No, I, I just like to watch, you know, no. You, why are you even alive then, kind of, you know, just to see other people do things, you know, come on, get involved. Okay, we get to the psychotherapy questions. Uh, and I, again, thanks for the super chat, Don, appreciate it. Uh, what is your opinion about psychotherapy? So the thing is, um, uh, it's um, my opinion on all those things is always it depends because I'm not against therapy as a concept. To be honest, I'm a therapist, you know, just because I don't have the fake degree. You know, that's the thing with all these things, you know, the, the, the education and degrees, I'm not saying all of it is bad, but it's just made up. There's not, there's not something like, yeah, now you're physically a therapist because you, uh, <laughs> you, you know, you understand, you just, I, I'm a human, I'm a man, you know, like I actually am, no matter what I do, I just am. But th these things like, you're a therapist now, that's, that's a made up title. It's, it's still a person, right? So I act as a therapist uh, also for many of my clients. Like it depends on the client, but it's, it's like, you, we all know if you follow this channel, this is not the channel that I only talk about this is how you fast. This is the facts about nutrition. This is how you train. You know, I talk about the entire thing. It's holistic. So, um, what, so do you see what I'm saying? I kind of become a therapist in my coaching, like as one aspect of the coaching. But what I'm getting at too is that when, if you go see a therapist, if that's good or not, depends entirely on the therapist. It's not the concept of therapy, right? So th th that's my point. The, the great therapists can do great things for you. If you go to the wrong person that just sat and read the books and think they know something now, you know, th then it's going to be terrible. They're not going to understand you at all. Like a person that talks to you about panic attacks, for instance, and don't ever had one themselves. What the fuck do they know, you know? Um... Don says, a gym bro who struggled before is more therapist than a real therapist. Yeah, word, word. Um, Francisco says, don't you think sunbathing is almost the same as sauna? I sweat like being on the sauna. No, 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 it, it's not the same at all. <laughs> I mean, they're both great things, but, you know, you get no UV rays, you get no, uh, you know, ultra red rays uh, from the um, sauna. You don't get, a, you know, you don't get any steroid genesis, uh, for, you know creating the hormones from the sun, like, I mean, the growth hormone. So no, 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 I mean, you, <laughs> the, the, it's good things, great to do both, uh, but, uh, well, the sun is definitely more important than the sauna. The, the sauna is not a must in the same way as the sun is. The, the sauna is just a should, a great thing to do, you know. 
Um, and Francisco Leon said, yeah, therapists mostly are a scam. Uh, maybe I read that already, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying mo many therapists are bad. I'm not saying it's a scam. That's, that's kind of my point with all this. Uh, I don't like when people are black and white uh, like that, because there's always a balance, a nuance, you know. Right. Okay. Thoughts on no fat Shlomo <laughs> F says, hey, Shlomo, what's up? Uh, well, I have videos on it, and I actually, I want to make an updated video on it. Um, I have a, a two years old video, but my I have a kind of a funny attitude in that video. I remember it, I was in a high state and started soaring a bit too close to the sky. So I'm a little, little bit like, you know, uh, I know I can rant and be a little provocative, even in a good state. But um, yeah, I know that I was just... Yeah, a little, but I think it's kind of a funny video. <laughs> I took on a Batman shirt and glasses. I said, I took out my, I'm talking, going to talk about nofap, lofap. And I'm like, I took out on my nerd outfit today. So you'll be able to relate to me better. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny of me. To be honest, I think I'm really funny a lot of the time. But so my, my thoughts on no, uh, lofap, uh, no fa <laughs> Shlomo Finkelstein dances. And Brian Dion, happy Saturday, Theo, when the solar nightmare. Oh, guys, the t-shirts are coming soon. Uh, I've ordered the first one, so it's beautiful. But, but, but okay, thoughts on nofap. So it's again that I have a balanced view of the thing. I'm like, uh, that's my entire point. Why would you go from jerking off to porn like twice per day or something? I have to go. Have a great day, you too, Don. Uh, see you later. Um, but it's like, why, why can't there be something in the middle here? You know, I, I'm of course against porn, uh, but even with porn, I've come up with that as a balance. I would say a married couple, uh, if like the wife would give the man some nude pictures when they, they go apart for, a, uh, you know, the, the man travels or something, I would even think that's okay, you know. Uh, but, but porn, uh, you know, the porn size. Uh, but um, uh, so, but, but the, the fapping in and of itself, you know, like there's nothing really wrong with if it's not an addiction, you know, because I feel like in, in a different way, also for men than women, you know, we produce this fucking semen, you know, uh, and for me personally, I have extremely high uh, sex drive and testosterone, you know, I'm very healthy man. So sometimes it drives me fucking crazy. Uh, uh, and then I just pull the fast one to get it over with, but I don't make it an addiction that I like light the candles and I'm, I'm going to watch my favorite porn for the third time today. <laughs> uh, it's like, but why would I have to not do it at all? I don't see the point. It's, it seems unnatural to when that option is there, right? So th that's my view. Yeah, I could see doing no fap as a, you know, extended fast from the thing if you're, you've struggled really. But, but then I don't think, you know, do we, I even don't think it's good. It, it feels very unnatural to go like a year without ever coming like that, you know. Uh, but that this might be too, because I seem to not have this function, you know, what, what is it, wet dreams thing. It's literally never happened to me. Uh, so maybe that's why, I, you know, because I guess if you can regulate in your sleep like that, I could see you doing it more permanently. Uh, because then that still what I think should happen sometimes still happens, right? But yeah, I'm going to do a more. Uh, I'm, I feel like this week, I, I felt a little weird today. I feel like my mind is not... Yesterday and today when I recorded videos, I just felt like my mind wasn't a, as structured uh, as usual. But I th I'm going to do a new video on that for sure. Uh... <laughs> Brian Dion, I still rewatched that searcher squat you did live stream. Super awesome. Thanks, man. Do, do you mean that you rewatched the entire. Uh, oh, and, and just say to Observer, thank you for answering. You earned a new subscriber. God bless you. Have a great day, evening. Well, God bless you too, Observer, and go, good luck with the thoughts uh, and feelings there. Like, stick around. Stick around and let me know how it goes. That's what I want with all you guys. We're going to build a tribe here, guys. Uh, but yeah, the, the search, did you. Do you mean that you watched that clip? Because I know you think that clip is cool, but I, I love that clip too. I think I was a fucking badass what I did there. I, I managed to scare myself. I was not scared enough and I hold, hold the speech there before I do it. Uh, I was really happy with that. But I, 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 let me know if, the, if you watch the stream. Entire stream. I kind of, you know, some of the streams I kind of want to go back to and maybe take out little cli other clips if it was good. Francisco Leon, it's like you have to pay like 30 US dollars an hour for someone that pretends to care about you. Yep, I prefer a gym, bro. Yeah, but to be honest, man, like I, I'm just, uh, 
like this is what I do. Uh, I, I'm not a uh, contrarian that I just have to argue with you for the sake of it, but I kind of still want to say, even just talking to someone, even if they don't have that much great advice to give to you, serves a purpose, just letting it out. You know, me and my bros, we do a lot of, you know, they call it mind dumping. When we have something that's bothering us, like, like even if it's more acute, like really difficult thing, or just like, oh, I have this thing I'm thinking about, you know. Uh, 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 a lot of the time, when you've just sent the voice message, because that's how we do it usually, you know, um, you know, some of the messages, it's not even that you need the response for certain things. It's like, oh, nice. Now I've got it out and I know that someone listen. And then, of course, we will respond to each other. But you see, there's, there's a big point in talking, not only to get the input and good advice, just to let it out, literally let it out, you know. So, yeah, guys, I think we come to a natural end of the stream there. We got into most of the things in the chat. Thank you for, you know, we made it happen more at the end, but thank you especially to uh, Observer and uh, Francisco Leon, who uh, yeah, really pulled, pulled the stream forward earlier on. Uh, and thanks for the super chat, everyone who did that, of course, Randy and Don, I think. And like you said, a community. Yes, a community. We want to build a community here. And have a great day, you too, Brian Dion. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, I will see you later. Comment on this stream after I close it.